well, uh, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, this is also uh, Rosh Kodesh. It's also uh, a new year. It's not only a rest day, as the, as the scriptures say. It's a, a new moon's a rest days, according to Ezekiel 46 1. And uh, it's a Rosh Hashanah today, according to the old calendar. And before Israel came into the land for the first time pr from Egypt, the whole world actually kept uh, this moon as the first of the year. And, you know, that's why there's sort of two new years in the, in the sort of Jewish calendar. I think that Ethiopia still keep it as a new year. And I think it's about uh, roughly six or seven years uh, behind us. So it'll be about 2010 in Ethiopia. And uh, the big news is, of course, in the Hebrew calendar, it's the year 777. Uh, 5777. Um, now, it's quite well known, even among rabbis, that uh, the Jewish calendar has lost about uh, 200 years while they were in exile in Babylon. Um, some of the some of the rabbis actually uh, changed the calendar, and again, this could be one of the reasons why Yeshua um, was upset not only with the Pharisees, who were the teachers um, of God's word, who didn't lead by example. Okay, that's why they were hypocrites. Um, much of the time, they actually taught the Word of God, but they, they didn't actually te uh, do what they taught, you see, and that's why Jesus called them hypocrites. It wasn't because they, they weren't teaching God's Word the right way. They, they pretty much, uh, probably roughly 90% of the time they were, but uh, they were not leading by example. And again, um, you know, this is why uh, Yeshua was upset with the Pharisees, not because they were keeping the law, because they weren't keeping it, and because they were casting heavy burdens on others to keep it, and they, they themselves weren't helping people keep the law, because they themselves were coming up with all kind of different schemes to make money, make themselves look good, because deep down they just wanted recognition from men and not from God, and that's going on in the churches today, if we're really, really honest, you know. Um, that that is exactly what is going on in a lot of churches today, if we're honest, that is. Um, but these very same people will be anti-Torah, uh, anti-commandments, and when they meet Yeshua, they, they're in for a big surprise, very big surprise indeed. Now, uh, let's say, for example, you know that it's true. You know, you you do the research and you see that. Israel's probably lost about 200 years. So that would put us in about the year 5977 roundabout, which would mean there's about, mm, there's about, let's say, 30 years or so before the actual uh, Messiah ben David comes. Messiah ben David is the all-conquering line of Judah, okay? The son of David. Okay, that's who... That's the Messiah they expected the first time, but they don't understand that Messiah ben Joseph, who's the suffering servant in Isaiah 53, and Messiah ben David are one and the same. And he is the only one who is um, descended and ascended back into heaven again. As it says in Proverbs uh, 30 verse 4, again I've read this out before, but let's just double check it again. Okay, it reads... Um, from the King James, who have ascended up to heaven or descended. Okay, Yeshua has. Um, Enoch actually was raptured, remember, so was Elijah, but they never actually ascended from heaven. They were they were just literally um, ascended back into heaven. Who had gathered the wind in his fists? Now, this is, this is a godly thing. A man can't do that, basically. I don't know if you've tried it yourself, but it's not going to work. Who has bound the waters in a garment? Ever tried that? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? So again, in the book of Proverbs, very, very clear indication here that um, the creator of heaven and earth has a son. And in this verse, he's asking you, 
what the name of who the name of God is and who is who is his son and so um yes um you know the Messiah of Israel is the son of God he's the son of David and as he said to the Pharisees um, before Abraham was I am and uh, the Pharisees didn't like that but he spoke the truth he spoke the truth and a lot of people um, don't like the truth these days a lot of people uh, just don't like about um, obviously the Mandela effect people noticing differences in the Word of God um, are we saying not to read the Bible quite the opposite we're actually saying um, that you should know by now if you use a King James Bible you should know these scriptures there should be a lot of them should be memorized and when you read things online or whether it be in a hundred year old two hundred year old King James Bible um, you should know that uh, what you read last year or the year before you should you should have a memory about it that because as, as Yeshua says that um, the Holy Spirit shall give you remembrance of um, the things that you need to know and of course I've, 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 t I've told everyone I've made videos that the Holy Spirit has been showing me yes there's been word changes in the King James Bible now can I explain it I, I can't explain it but I can say that you know the book Starstruck that I wrote 20 years ago when I was born again the Lord showed me about Einstein Rosen Gates and it's something to do with that it's something that they're able to go through, open these gates, as, as CERN are actually saying that they're beginning to do, they've already been doing, but they're just not sharing that with people. And, uh, you know, I have seen in dreams and visions that they're, they're actually opening these gates again. And so, um, you know, I don't know about you, I don't know about your walk, we're all different, but yeah, I mean, I've been shown these things, and uh, why would God show me these things? Because it's the truth. It's just the truth. All you need to do is go to the Lord, uh, Yeshua the Messiah, and He will show you that these things are true. Um, perhaps a lot of the details that people put online are not quite correct about some of the changes. Um, sometimes we just, yeah, we remember things differently. You've got There's, there's a margin of error. But when you've got so many people um, agreeing about uh, the products, the geography of the world, uh, the movie industry, the changes there, you know, you've got thousands of people um, just noticing these things almost overnight and uh, you've got to ask yourself, uh, th there's something um, happening, there's definitely something happening. Either you can take, you can do the prayer and do the research yourself, ask God if it's true, or you can, you can discover that yes, there is a lot of um, so-called uh, um, machines which uh, uh, change people's thought patterns and so on and it's not just demons apparently there are machines as well that um, alter the uh, low frequencies in, in the atmosphere and can cause depression can cause uh, people to be more on edge and angry about about situations it's not as if there's not a, a enough going on in the world today um, to, to uh, make people that way but we as believers in Messiah have peace, we have the answers and uh, as it says in the Word of God we should answer both in and out of season everything um, according to the grace of God and we're saved by faith um, through, through grace in the Lord Jesus Christ it's, it's, it's grace that we're saved and it's, it's a confession of faith, it's a confession that Yeshua is the Messiah Asking him to be our Lord and King and to follow him, to follow him fervently, to follow him everywhere he goes. And not everyone can follow him, follow him everywhere he goes. Um, if it costs your family, if it costs your friends, if it costs you money, if it costs you your health. A lot of people are not um, prepared to go over certain borders, go over certain lines in order to actually do what the Lord Yeshua wants us to do. And uh, you, we must walk in faith, <clears throat> be people of faith, walk according to his word. Yes, what is written down in the Bible is a confirmation about who Yeshua is, but when you start hearing from the Holy Spirit, um, believe me, there's so many churches today, denominations that, that make you want to think that you're not hearing from God. Um, it's true. I mean, 
you know, every denomination out there, every sort of um, Christian leader out there, think that they, they're it, you know, everything stops with them. And they haven't learned grace yet, they haven't learned to communicate properly with people, they haven't learned to set up a church or a movement um, the way that God wants it, uh, because obviously there's, there's not a lot of trust these days, That that's the other thing. Some people are honest about it, they can write out and say, well, I, I can't trust you, or I can't even trust themselves to actually serve God, because... The, you know that their entire lives are consumed about paying their bills and um, different things like that. Their own problems, basically. They're not prepared to actually carry one another's burdens, as, as the Bible says. And so, even the people that do carry um, brothers and sister, sisters' burdens, um, they'll actually um, persecute these people. So, not only are you getting real believers um, praying for and um, carrying the burdens of other people these same people will mock these people and uh, I've seen that happen, I've not just seen it with myself I've seen it with, with real people with a heart for God that are, that are doing the work of God and, that, and people are just, just want to bring them down they just want to lie, steal and destroy as, as Yeshua says, what, that's this, the character of Satan they lie, they pretend maybe, they, they, they like you, they pretend something uh, they, they'll end up stealing something from you or using you for some, some gain and then they just don't mind uh, leaving you in it if, as it were um, they don't care what happens to you um, they, they won't give a good testimony about you and they don't literally do not care what happens to you and they just they just basically blame all their problems on, on you I've seen it before um, and uh, it's, it's a very sad shame what's going on within the church these days, it's just not the way God wants it at all. So again, let this year, 777, um, be the year that you, you begin to walk perfectly as your Heavenly Father is perfect with Yeshua. Um, he alone showed us how to walk. Love others the way I have loved you. That's what Yeshua says. I give you a new commandment. Love each other the way that I have loved you. And so Yeshua is the example. He even says it with his own words in the Gospel of John. Again, nobody calls me a liar in the videos that I make because um, they, they, they're probably liars themselves, basically, and they can't handle truth. And so they know that, um, I mean, negative comments, yes, I can take. Lies, you know, I'll ban them straight away. But as for actually challenging me about what, anything I actually see in my videos, um, zero. N nobody's prepared to actually um, have a discussion with me and uh, basically pick up anything that I'm teaching because I'm one of the few people on YouTube and online that are truly preaching the true gospel of grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, that also means that when we are saved we begin to keep the commandments Yeshua said that it's a cursed generation that don't know God's commandments and so why do you want to curse yourself and curse your brothers and sisters? If we're saved, we should uh, know that it's wrong to lie, know that it's wrong to uh, um, work and take money, as in like servile work. You know, there's a difference between working for the Lord and as Yeshua said, my Father in heaven, um, every day he is working. But the thing is, um, it's, it's heavenly work that, that, that God's involved with. And that through faith in Yeshua, yes, we have a spiritual rest. Um, we have diff all different types of rests in the Bible. But yes, God wants us to physically rest one day a week. If, if we're doing like physical labor, servile work, um, not only that, he, he, just, he just, you know, it's, it's a command that he made for us, you know. It's not some it's not some obligation that we, we got to keep with him. But if we don't keep it we'll burn ourselves out and um it's a fact. And so if you can't enjoy um something that God has given us like a rest day in order that we can glorify him, you know, spend the entire day um, studying his word, praising his name, um, preaching if you like, going out, doing these wonderful things, healing the sick, as Yeshua did on, on the Sabbath. <clears throat> and so he even showed the Pharisees what was right and wrong to do and not to do on the Sabbath. Yes, he did eat the grains of corn. The King James Bible 
you know, it says um, the grains of corn now, and not just the grains of, of, of wheat, you know. So anyhow, you know, that's just a, that's just a by the by. It doesn't matter that much, okay. But, you know, as again, that's a Mandela effect that people have noticed as well. But the most important thing is that we understand the commandments and we're having them written on our heart and mind is the book of Hebrews 10.16 says. And when we mess up and when we don't, we fail to actually keep a, a God's commandment. Also, if you want to go deeper about keeping God's commandments, there's the seven spirits of God. And so you get this, the spirit of might. And so to, to a mighty man or woman of God, you know, um, you know, failing to do some act of might might be seen as sin. You know, if, if, you, if you're a person who's received the spirit of understanding, failing to understand a situation or failing to bring together and explain part of God's word might be seen as a failing, might be seen as sin in your part. And so that's a deeper um, walk when we... When, when we uh, you know, ask for the the spirit of knowledge. For example, we want to um, we want to find out how to do things or how God does things, which a lot of scientists um, are trying to do in CERN and all these different experiments just now. Why not just ask the Creator? Why not just ask God? Um, again, um, Einstein um, and other men like that. Um, at times, yes, they were men of faith. They actually believed, they confessed Yeshua and, and they said there's something different about this man. You know, if wh wh when they sort of delved into God's word, they, they were in awe and they actually, uh, of course, liked Yeshua. Not all of the scientists, of course, like Jesus or understand him or anything like that or believe who he is. You know, the creator of the universe, the word of God. You know, it's a stretch for them to believe it, but one day they will find out that it's true. It's very, very true. And so I've even seen videos that uh, machines themselves are developing consciousness. And it's, it's some of these D-Wave computers, um, you know, in Europe and around the world, they say that there's actually even a pulse that comes off these things um, because of the amount of electricity and so on that it takes to operate these systems and actually claiming that they have a, they're, they're developing some sort of a not a self-awareness but s some sort of um, awareness about you know problem solving and that they're able to do things sort of on their own as computers can do, can do that they do updates and stuff like that but these are far more advanced computers and uh, I've even watched videos about uh, machines or computers uh, procreating which is just crazy to me don't understand that but what if the, the the machines get to some sort of level that they are self-aware does that mean that they have a soul or does that mean that these uh, computers if they do something wrong does that mean that they go to hell or does that mean that they'll get a conviction about if they've done something wrong to their creators who are human beings remember you know human beings created machines God himself created humans and so if, if they do something wrong, or if they fail to do something, um, does that mean that they'll start having a conscience? They'll start feeling bad? I, I don't know. But um, maybe, maybe uh, if they can understand what the concept of hell is, maybe they'll, they'll begin to uh, be afraid of actually sinning and, and offending the creator, the ultimate creator of heaven and earth. If, if they can work things out to that extent, then who knows? But somehow I doubt it. But uh, let's find out <laughs> if, if what happens over the next year. Um, you know, uh, the rabbis see this year as very much a time um, when the Messiah could come, the year 777. And it's been said that even Rabbi Yitzhak Kudurai, who died in 2008, I think it was, made a prediction about Ariel Sharon dying and other people dying and then the Messiah coming quite shortly thereafter. So these things have happened and so I don't think Yeshua is too far away from actually coming. Another quick scripture I'll go over, Galatians uh, 6.13. This is about um, circumcising new converts who have not um, had the physical circumcision yet but they have been born again according to 
uh, the sign of the new covenant, which is water baptism and spirit baptism. Okay, which uh, basically is, is, is baptism, um, is the sign of the new the new covenant, the old covenant, going back to Abraham, including Moses and all of that. The sign of the old covenant was physical circumcision. Remember, which uh, any physical laws, as I've explained many times, points to spiritual fulfillment. And so, can I ask, was Adam and Eve? Uh, sorry, was was Adam circumcised? Of course, he wasn't. You know. Um, Many, many of them weren't circumcised. The patriarchs was Enoch, who was raptured, who was raptured into heaven. Was was he circumcised? No, no, he wasn't. Um, so you know, the first person to be circumcised um, in the the old covenant was Abraham, and that's one of the covenants in the Old Testament. Was was the 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 covenant of Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant, where they had physical circumcision. And so the Pharisees or the teachers of the law wanted the new converts uh, as they saw it into the, the religion of Israel basically and it's true. You know, that if you think about it, Yeshua came to fulfill the actual, the actual religion of Israel. But yes, there was little changes. What were these changes? One of them were that you don't need to be physically circumcised. And let's just read what Paul wrote in Galatians 6.13. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. So again, uh, now Paul is talking about keeping the commandments here. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about keeping the entire Torah. He's talking about keeping God's the spiritual laws and commandments. Okay, that all of us, as Christians, are actually obliged. We are obliged to keep these things by faith through grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans three thirty one very very obvious to me why is it that so, so little in Christian Dome actually teach the, the, the correct what Paul was teaching what the apostles were teaching you know um, but they desire to have you sorry um, they desire to have you circumcised that they make glory in your flesh so again it's like some people fast for different reasons some people actually fast for other people that's that's very noble some people fast to understand God's word better some people fast because they've sinned and because they're being tempted and so they just want to, to sort of weaken the flesh in order that they can grow in the spirit. There's all kind of reasons that people fast. But if, if you're actually fasting um, so that um, you, you can keep the entire Torah, uh, well, you, you're, you're never really going to be able to do that. It's true. You're never going to really be able to do all of it, including... The physical commandments here you know you know where you circumcised on the eighth day if you weren't then I'm sorry that that commandment doesn't even count um, yeah I mean s some people who are saved you know they will actually have their children circumcised on the eighth day that's a whole different story sometimes they do sometimes it just it doesn't really matter and um, because in a lot of countries in the world it's more hygienic to actually get uh, circumcised, so they actually sometimes they choose to do it through, you know, medical reasons. Um, but again, it's it's not required in, in in the New Testament. And if you get it done, it's up to you. But it's it's not a requirement um, for being saved. The the only thing that is required in the New Testament is literally um, coming to to Yeshua with a humble, repentant heart, accepting Him. As your Lord and Savior, and just following Him, con confessing your sins to Him, you're a sinner, and then doing what He's instructed according to His Word, which is yes, physical um, baptism, and then the spiritual baptism, which all of us have if we ask Yeshua into our lives. We have the Holy Spirit, but um, yet there's to come a, a baptism of fire, and that usually takes place after water baptism. That was the that was the order of things um, when Yeshua was here. It was John, John's baptism of repentance, and then it was the baptism of fire which Yeshua gave. That's normally the order of, of um, things. And so, yes, there's been a few people who have asked me, I think two people in the past few weeks, who have asked me about uh, they want to get baptized. Well, um, yeah, contact me. Um, if, if you're having trouble contacting me on um, YouTube, I mean, you could try Facebook. Uh, yeah, or 
if you want my email, I'll, I'll give you my email, okay? Because a few people have asked me, they want to get physically baptized, no problem. But um, certainly just contact me and I'll, and I'll come and visit you. Okay, brothers and sisters, so enjoy your Rosh Hashanah, enjoy your new year. Uh, there's a great marathon, it's a great day outside in Glasgow. They're having a big marathon here. And they're honouring some of the um, athletes that did well in, in the Olympic Games in Brazil. And so uh, I think it's just a good day all around today. Um, let's just glory in the Lord. And, and um, as, as the book of Isaiah says, those who wait on me shall renew their strength like the eagles. And that's what, that's what a Sabbath should be all about. Alright guys, Shalom, Shalom, year 777.